Good morning everyone. Welcome to our worship celebration this morning. What a blessed morning. God bless us with life and we are able to enjoy it again, especially uh, in coming in the presence of God. Are you excited to praise and worship the Lord this morning? Psalm 106 verse 1 says, Praise the Lord, give thanks to the Lord for He is good, for His loving kindness endures forever. Before the mag praise and worship, let us come in the presence of God. O oh God Almighty, we thank you for this wonderful day that you have given us, knowing that this is the day that you have made, and we must rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for this uh, uh, opportunity and privilege, Lord, that we can praise, we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Thank you for being blessed with life today and being blessed and have the opportunity, O oh God, to come before thee, accept our praises, our thanksgiving this morning, and O oh God Almighty, whatever things that causes us to be unworthy before thy presence, we humbly ask for forgiveness, and not only forgiveness, grant that with the help of the Holy Spirit within us, grant to us a true and repentant heart, that we will be worthy, O oh God, to be called your servant, worthy to be called your children. So Lord, be honored, be praised, be glorified today. For in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. <music> Oh 
It's the Lord who will determine his steps. Like Joseph, ang iya mga utod, uh, ang ilang planong ibaligya si Joseph para madula na siya sa ilang family. But when God intervenes, nakita natin ang kabuhi ni Joseph nagbago because God is at work kag ang ginoo wala gid nagapabaya sa iya and we know that uh, ang bible naghamag gid everything will work together for good for those who love him that's why uh, nag-assinso siya sa lugar sa Egypt nga sa diin nahimo siya nga second in command sa Pharaoh so our message this morning talks about the believers destiny in order for Proverbs 69 to come into play in our lives our lives must first be totally consecrated or sanctified unto the Lord 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 says may God himself the God of peace sanctify you true and true 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 21 if a man cleanses himself from the later Latter, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. As you see, God's goal is for us to be totally, take note the word totally, consecrated or set apart for his purpose and the destiny he has called us to, it is only as we are. Consecrated that we can be prepared, take note for God's work in our lives and thus fulfill the destiny he has for us in the old testament vessels always had to be consecrated before they could be used for the service of tabernacle of the tabernacle or temple so una una god's purpose in the earth god's purpose in the earth today is much more than just getting a bunch of people saved and going to heaven jesus is in the process of building a church in which the gates or the authority of hell will not be able to prevail against. So it is a church that is being designed to come into the fulfillment of all that the prophets have prophesied and to fully restore all that was lost in the fall. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26 to 27 says, To make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through the word, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless that's why it's very important for us to be familiar with god's word because it is our guide in living a holy life a life that is pleasing a life that is acceptable before god and we have a responsibility to serve the purpose of god for our generation just as David served the purpose of God for his generation, so we must serve the purpose of God for our generation. Acts 13 verse 36 says, For when David had served God's purpose in his own generation. So think of all the people in David's day that benefited from the kingdom blessings because David served God's purpose. So just think of all the people who are going to benefit from the blessing of the kingdom because we have chosen to consecrate our hearts to God for His purpose in this generation. So we must be like the sons of Issachar. First Chronicles 12.32, Naghambada, men of Issachar, who understood the times. So, dapat baluntano ang panahon. We must be sensitive to the direction of God upon our lives. And imagine what a privilege that we receive the free gift of salvation. And if we allow ourselves to be used by God, also our family will receive the free gift of salvation. But as we hinder the work of God in our lives, then our family will be deprived also of that salvation. Now, second, distinctive marks of consecrated people. 
the following are various attitudes or characteristics that should be in the process of being developed in our lives. Siguro dapat uh, lataon man nato ng ato nga kabuhi kung ara na ba ini nga mga attitudes, ini nga mga characteristics nga makita kung nakit, makita ba ini sa ato nga kabuhi. If these qualities are in us, then we can be assured that we are pressing into the process of consecrated or sanctified unto God's purpose. As a result, we are in position to fulfill the destiny God has charted out for us. So our overall lifestyle must be first an example of being a living sacrifice. Dapat makita man natin, makita man sa atin nga kabuhi, nga kita buhi, nga halad. As born again, spirit-filled Christians who have a destiny to fulfill, we are to present ourselves unto God as a living sacrifices. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifices. Take note. Holy and pleasing to God. Naghambag din ang ino, Be holy for He is holy. That's why we ought to live a holy uh, kabuhi. So as a result of sacrificing ourselves to God, we will be transformed by the renewing of our minds and be able to discern the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You can't really understand or be involved in the purpose of God without the element of sacrifice in your life. So second, we must be vessels of honor. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 to 21, naghambal that the Lord knows those who are His and everyone who confesses the name of the Lord must turn away from wickedness. In a large house, there are articles not only of gold and silver but also of wood and clay. Some are for noble purposes and some for ignoble. If a man cleanses himself from the latter, he will be an instrument for noble purposes, made holy, useful to the master, and prepared to do any good work. So with a full understanding of your identity as to who you are in the kingdom of God and what your purpose is, comes a greater motivation and desire to Put off the old nature and its lust. A person who has not truly repented is lacking in vision and purpose. Vision will cause us to be constrained in the things of God. Now third, we are not to be entangled with the affairs of the world. 1 John chapter 2 verse 15 to 16, like humble, do not love the world. Or anything in the world, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful nature, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has, and thus comes not from the Father, but from the world. And it, it's a sad thing. Nadamo mga Kristohanon, nalipat na sa ilang pagkakristohanon because they are so uh, more busy in the world than being busy working in expanding the kingdom of God. Tandaanta, if you are not giving yourself to the purpose of God, your desires and affections will fall back on the world and its desires to the point that you get entangled with it and as a result, you are unable to adequately serve God and His purpose. Now, fourth, decisions in life take on a new perspective. Your decisions in life become based on God's overall purpose and destiny for your life. So rather than your own selfish ambitions and desires for the moment. Tandaan ta, naghambangin ang ginonga. If you want to follow me, deny yourselves. So instead, uh, i-focus na ito na atong kaugalingon, i-focus na kung ano ang gusto sa ginoo sa atong nakabuhi. That's why Matthew 6.33 naghambang, but seek first his kingdom and not only his kingdom naghambal siya and his righteousness and if we do this all these things will be given to you as well so your decisions are based on the whole rather than part you base your decisions in life on how they will affect 
pursuing God's purpose rather than emotional impulse of the moment. So faith, not my will, but God's will in times of testing. Now, in times of testing and hardship, your prayer is not my will, but your will be done. This is where your heart really becomes consecrated unto God because you realize there may be an easier way out at times. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 3, Nakamal Gida, endure hardship with us like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. Uh, just like the story of Jesus, where makita natin that Jesus could have taken the easy way out when he was in agony concerning the Father's uh, will for his life in the Garden of Gethsemane the night before his crucifixion. Pwede mo siya makamala, binoo ko, magpakabudlay ko, no? But he chose rather to endure the hardness of the way. It was in this commitment that Jesus fulfilled the ultimate destiny and calling for his life. Now, consecrated people, number six, careful how they live understanding the Lord's will. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 17, like humble, be very careful then how you live. Dapat maghalong kita. Kay nga ah, ang mga taong nagatulog sa ato. And they define Christianity according to how we live. And verse 16, like humble, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. We know that the will of God is perfect. So, dapat mabalaan natin kung ano ang will sa ginawa sa ating mga kabuhi. That's why, uh, damo kabuhi naguba because they choose what they feel instead of choosing or following or obeying the command or the perfect will of God for our lives. Sino mas, man mas nakabalog kung ano ang dapat sa akong nakabuhi? Di ba dapat ang, uh, uh, ang ginoo kasi ang nagtuga, ang naghatag sa sining nakabuhi? So a person who has been consecrated or sanctified unto God's purpose will understand what the Lord's will but also knew what to do. So a person who has not been consecrated unto God's purpose is living according to his, her emotions. Now, seven, fervency level is maintained under all circumstances. So ang yung intensity of service, dapat wala liwat-liwat, straight gate, or uh, hindi kay kung tiyo sa pagtilaw, ah, pahulay ko anay panahon sa buka na uh, uh, praise the Lord. No? Dapat whatever circumstance in our lives, we are consistent with our relationship with God. Uh, Romans chapter 12 verse 11 Never be lacking in seal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. So no matter what season or difficulty you are, maintain your level of fervency. Because you know all things work together according to the purpose of God. Now, a consecrated person, a desires in God's will. Psalm chapter 40, verse 8, I desire to do your will. So there are many hindrances, hardships, trials, and oppositions that come our way as we journey through our destiny in God. It will take having a true desire in God's purpose and will to keep us on track or to keep us from getting detoured along the way. So, there is nine genuine desire in giving to God's purpose. Because King David had set his affection on the house of God, he found himself giving over and above all that he had actually prepared to give. First Chronicles 29 verse 3, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I now give my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God. Makita natin nga ang pagpalangga ni David sa kino, halindi sa yung natagipusod. Just like when we are in love, it's our joy to give and it's not a burden. And this is how in love David sa kino, he is willing to give 
the best for God. Ultimately, David's giving heart was a major part of him fulfilling the destiny God had for him. So as you desire yourselves in giving in the same way, David did, you will be able to fulfill your destiny as well. Consecrated people, then, uh, walk in the divine blessing and inheritance of God. Acts 20 verse 32, Naghambal, I commit you to God and to the word of His grace, which can build you up and give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. So as long as you continue to pursue God's purpose for your life, you will be walking on the path where all of His treasures and inheritance are available to you. You will need your inheritance and God's blessing to fulfill the destiny God has for you. So in closing, my prayer is that we will all become more and more consecrated to God's purpose, realizing that there really isn't anything else worth living for. Well, if you are working for God, you have everything. Because God is the source of everything. Kagsir na ang pinakanami na amo na servisyuhan. Kaya nagapromisa din siya na hindi siya magpabaya sa aton. And when he, when he is with us, then who can be against us? So we each have a destiny in God to fulfill. The question, do you want to give your life for it? Tandaata, we have only one life to live. Gabay pa that we will follow what's God's will for our life. Tandaata na ang binuo ang naghatag sa sininga kabuhi. Gabay pa na magakabuhi kita in accordance to His will. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, God that as a believer, it is our destiny to live a consecrated life. Grant, O Lord, that you will be at work in us, continue to sanctify us through the power of your Holy Spirit within us, transform us in the person that you want us to be, and allow, dear Father, that upon this life, you will be greatly be honored and be praised, that through this life, Lord, that you have given us, it will be used for your greater glory and honor. And through this life, O God, many also will come to know you as their personal Savior and Lord. So make a difference upon this life. Allow, O God, that our light will shine before men, that they will see our good deeds, and it will glorify you, our Father who art in heaven. So Lord, as we end our worship celebration, uh, grant, Lord, thy presence, thy blessings, thy favor. Grant success, grant victory in all the things that we are, we are about to do. And may the blessing of our God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remains with you. Amen and Amen. Palapakata ang ginoon.